and this is the, uh, the latest greenhouse I've been working on to automate. Um, you see it's a it's a lot larger than my greenhouse automation project. This one here is a lot more advanced. Um, it's actually got a variable control instead of just an off on fan. You can see it's got a louver um, both on the, the top and the bottom which are connected um, via steel cable. So when you open one they both open and you get a nice convection flow um, going through them. And just like before it's all controlled with the um, Arduino control package that I put together. And this is actually, if you watch my video on how to build them, this is the, the one that I built. Um, now you remember, it, um, previously I had, I had two uh, uh, laptop type power supplies and then some uh, 7812s and 7805 regulators. I went with the, uh, upgraded these to some switching 12 volt power supplies. And uh, for my 5 volts I actually have a little 7805, but it's actually a, a switcher. And then you just got to put on a bunch of capacitors to filter everything. Um, so the way this one works is pretty much um, pretty much the same. There's a there's a temperature sensor on the outside. There's a temperature sensor on the inside. Um, and it basically, just compares the outside and the inside and moves the uh, the louver accordingly. Um, I can just show you the action. Right right now, it's kind of um, regulating about 20 degrees, but I'll just manually open it so you can see the action of uh, the louver. And there, it just opened all the way up. And there it is closing. See it roll all the way down, both of them at the same time. Um, it's nice and slow as well, so I can get it fairly accurate. Um, the system works with a uh, an actuator I got, or the fellow got a Princess Auto. It has a uh, built-in potentiometer, um, so I can actually. Uh, uh, the control is based on a feedback from the potentiometer. Um, it's actually pretty accurate. Right now it moves in steps of 5%. You can see it um, move there. But, but right now when it's controlling, it just makes comparisons from the, the, the target. And as long as the humidity and the outside temperature are within range, it'll move it by 5% um, accordingly until it reaches the set point. And it works pretty good. Um, you can see I've, I've done a lot of work with the... Uh, the interface here. I don't know if you can read that, but basically you got the temperature internal, temp uh, humidity internal, temperature external, humidity external. Having two sensors is essential because what you'll have happen is if it's raining outside or it's cold and humid out, you don't want the louver opening from humidity if there's no, if there's a, it's not going to improve any. So you have to have the external temperature slash humidity, mostly the external humidity. This one also has the. Uh, the ground temperature and it's a temperature sensor buried in the ground. Uh, able to see there, and it's it's buried in the ground, and it also actually has a heating system. And what it is is just a block heater for a car, um, a little pump. Um, you can see it at the bottom there, um, and some glycol. And I've just wired it up to a um, this socket right here, and I got a big 20 amp. Um, AC relay in there. So what happens is if the ground temp is below a certain if this uh, um, ground temperature um, is below a certain set point it just uh, kicks on a relay and then this starts circulating um, and heating up the ground. Um, and I, we don't use that, that's not included in the ambient temperature control with the louver because the ground temp um, we, you might end up cooking the, the, the soil in the, or the roots um, so it's separate, it's just based on the ground temperature. Um, as well it has a fan control and again separate set point so if the temperature gets uh, if the temperature gets beyond a certain point and the louver is 100% open it just uh, turns the fan on kind of like a default if the louver is not enough. Um, you'll also see that um, for the operation of this because you don't want to have to link up the Arduino every time you want to make a change 
Um, I was talking about in the build, you know, put switches in because you never know when, when you're going to need them. And I'm really glad I did because I've set it up so you, you hold this up once and you can go to your, you can adjust your louver temperature set point, your day humidity set point, your louver timing. And that's basically because you don't want, um, the temperature and humidity are, are going to change slowly. Uh, and I found that it just ramps up and down. And so I put in an adjustable time here. So basically every five minutes, if the, it hasn't reached the set point, it goes into a function and it, it moves the louver either up or down. Um, and if it's in neutral, then it just sits there and doesn't do anything. And what we're going to see is if I leave this alone in five minutes, it's probably going to adjust that louver or less than five minutes now because I was goofing around with it. And it's going to, in five minutes, it's going to find where it wants to go and it's just going to move there. Also, I've put the, uh, the water timing in here. So you can adjust your uh, how long it waters for. Right now it waters three times a day for whatever you set that to. And you just, this other switch, right now it's on the louver timing. I put that up to six or seven, and then you can change it back down to five or whatever with this other switch. And if I hold this down, I can move that little, the dash, and you can select which, which one of those you want to adjust. Um, and if I hold it up again, I go to the second adjustment menu. And you have your ground temperature set point. Um, that's for that uh, this circulating thing. And it's just completely dependent on the ground temperature. It has nothing to do with the ambient temperature or the humidity. Um, as well, I've got the, uh, the, the night humidity set point. Um, the the louver per percent it moves. So you can adjust how much the louver moves every time period. So right now it moves every five minutes. And every time it moves, it moves by an amount of 5%. And as well, the, again, the fan has the fan temperature set point, and the fan is separate from the, the louver control as well. Um, another upgrade I did is on my, my greenhouse, I had just a light sensor um, to control the, the, the timing on when it thought it was night and day, and when to start watering, etc., etc. On this one, I actually put in a real-time clock. Um, and it's going to work out a lot better. It's less fiddly. With the uh, with the photoelectric sensor, you got to calibrate it, and it's, it's kind of... It's, it's finicky. The, the real-time clock is a lot more stable. Um, it seems to work very well. Um, so that's basically the layout of that. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is uh, on my greenhouse, one of the hardest things to do was get an accurate humidity and temperature reading. Um, when I showed you the temperature sensor earlier, you're probably thinking, whoa, what, what was that? But I can kind of describe it now. Um, um, basically what I was having happening is the temperature sensor, especially the one on the inside of the greenhouse, and I can show you that one, I'll kind of describe it to you there, um, was that the you put the temperature sensor in, and no matter what, it would overheat, and if you put it in the shade, then you put it in some corner, and then the air would get stagnant, and the humidity wouldn't uh, um, represent, be an accurate representation. Um, so, so what we've done, and it's a great idea, is he, we actually put a little DTH-11, and it's just a basic uh, temperature sensor. I don't know if you can see that there. I'm kind of pointing into the light. Um, but it's, there's a DTH-11 just hanging there. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, and what happens is it's in this white tube, so the sunlight is reflective off of it. And at the top, there's a piece of black tube. And what happens is the sunlight heats this, and it actually creates a bit of a vacuum, so you're always circulating... Um, fresh air and it gets an accurate representation of both temperature and humidity and that is essential because if you try to do this control package at home you'll be pulling your hair out because your fan's always going to be off or on from humidity and temperature um, just because it's it, it's inaccurate and this is a cheap um, and you don't have to have anything active there's no fan pulling air through it so it's cheap it works well um, and I would recommend going that route um, when you go to automate it um, so the watering valve in this greenhouse is right over here, and it's uh, the same thing as what I put in mind, just that um, electric over, I think it's I think it's pneumatic, electric over pneumatic valve. In this case, we're using it for water, um, but it does work well. It's all brass, don't, don't have a lot of problems with corrosion or whatever. You just got to maybe uh, spray some WD-40 in there before winter. And it just goes through this uh, dripper hose all the way around these, uh, these troughs here. And you can see the tomato plants are doing uh, very well. And as well... There's a oh, the ground temperature as well as actually just a sensor buried in the ground about 18 inches down. So there's the you can see that the wire comes down and it's just buried in the ground. And it's another DTH11 that we've just siliconed to make it waterproof. And again, the outside 
um, humidity and temperature is the same idea. There's a DTH-11 just kind of uh, hanging in here. And it's on the shady side of the greenhouse as well to keep the light off. And then there's a big black tube. And it's so many, you can put your hand at the bottom and you can actually, on a hot day when the black, the black tubing gets hot, you can actually feel the, uh, the air flowing past your fingers. Yep. Yeah. And uh, giving an accurate representation. So we're just going to demonstrate. Uh, um, right now it shows the next move is at a minute 30. Um, and we're at 29 minutes and 30 40 seconds, so in 20 seconds um, it's going to move, and I just forced it um, forced it down with the relays a little bit, so you're going to see that the right now the target's 100% because I mean look at the temperature is 24 and it should be at set points at 21, so it's going to open up. Um, right now it's at 85, it wants to go to 100, so we're going to see it move, you know, 15%. There we go, yeah, it just did its thing. And uh, like I said, it's just based on a potentiometer to give it a percent feedback or whatever. And it's always, I never have it run right to 100%. Um, so I always have it run within 3%, that way you never get it uh, uh, jammed out. There's also a, a default uh, uh, motor timeout, so you don't end up sitting there cooking out your motor. But basically it tries for whatever you set the timeout to, and if it reaches that time period, then it just shuts it down, gives you a warning, um, and then continues on. Well, just like before, I have the same data acquisition package um, and basically uh, you can see this is the louver percentage um, this is the humidity um, and this is the temperature and this basically represents uh, the morning time when it was dark and the, the, the temperature rises and the, the louver starts opening accordingly um, and you see that uh, you see that right here um, that's when I was outside uh, just goofing around with it manually uh, that's just noise on the radio um, you see now it's it's warm out and it's lots of sunlight, so you basically just slowly went up to 100%. Um, and it'll stay there, and eventually the fan will kick in. Um, and yeah, there you go. Basically the same as before. You know, you got your you got your you can record your temperature external, your humidity external, humidity internal, um, your the the timing. That's number of seconds and yeah. And of course the, the louver percentage there, um, yeah, pretty much the same as before. And you see that the, the greenhouse is way out that window there, um, and I'll probably 150 feet away. And I'm still using that the APC, APC 220 just in a little box here to make it nice and user friendly.